going to be offering his view on what's been happening in Washington, D.C. today, Professor Danny Shaw. Danny, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Danny, we've seen what can be described as unprecedented scenes at the U.S. Capitol building this Wednesday with the breaking into the Capitol building by supporters of President Donald Trump. What are your views on what we've been seeing? Yeah, I don't think we've ever certainly seen something uh, quite like this. Um, the first reflection of the movement across the U.S. and across the world is that if this was Black Lives Matter, if these were immigrants and African Americans, and it, there would have been a massacre today. Um, but because these were thousands and thousands of Trump loyalists who come from a, a background of, of white supremacy, uh, and of fascism, um, there was very little resistance by the police. They were able to uh, scale the walls of Congress. It's a scene, an unprecedented scene, as you indicated. We've never seen anything uh, quite like this. Um, Pelosi came out and, uh, and stated that they're going to go on uh, certifying the Electoral College vote. So really, I don't think this will have any big uh, political impact, but it certainly shows that though Trump may be gone in two weeks, Trumpism in white supremacy is uh, part of a 500-year legacy in this country. Sanders has, Bernie Sanders has taken to Twitter to blame Donald Trump for exactly for everything that's been happening today and his attempts to cling on to power. He's also said that Trump will go down in history as the worst and most dangerous president in history. Obviously, what we've seen today is a reflection of the discourse of President Donald Trump, his refusal to concede defeat to Joe Biden, but also, as you say, an increasing uh, movement that he has helped to fuel of white supremacism in the United States. What do you think we can expect going forward? That's exactly right, uh, Catriona. Uh, Trump has been in inciting towards this type of uh, anti-establishment rhetoric from the from the right, from a reactionary point of view for months and for years. Uh, today was largely predictable. They were calling for this rally, uh, save, uh, save the Save America rally. A uh, woman has been uh, shot and killed uh, in the violence. Uh, we saw these protesters sitting uh, arrogantly uh, right at home with the Confederate flags in Nancy Pelosi's uh, office. They were taking selfies with the police. So I think what today proved more than ever is that uh, the state and white supremacy, they're very intertwined in, in different ways. A lot of people are asking, will there be charges against these, uh, those who committed mayhem today and trespassed? Um, Trump is inc increasingly isolated. He's now on the Twitter offensive against Mike Pence. Um, so he does have a large social base, but in terms of institutional ruling class support, he is a, a wet hen before history. Uh, we've heard from on Twitter, Ilan Omar has said that she is drawing up articles of impeachment and that Donald Trump should be impeached by the House of Representatives and removed by, from office by the United States Senate, given that there are just two weeks to go before Joe Biden should be inaugurated as President of the United States. How likely do you think that these attempts to impeach Trump at this late date are to succeed? Well, the liberal sectors have been trying to impeach Trump for four years. First, it was the whole Russia Gate conspiracy. They've been trying to blame Russia for decaying U.S. capitalism for years and years. Uh, now they try to blame China and other uh, boogeymen. Um, so the liberals will continue to their dying day with the impeachment clauses. They've tried to invoke the 25th Amendment about Trump's uh, mental health. And of course, they have many valid points there. Uh, Trump is indeed dangerous uh, for many of the reasons and, and, and more uh, that they mentioned. Um, but with uh, only 14 days left in the Oval Office, um, I doubt that impeachment proceedings will go forward now. Though the next two weeks promise to be interesting, I think what we can expect are lone wolf fascist attacks against vulnerable targets or against uh, symbols of uh, the institutional power of the United States. The vulnerable targets is very worrying. There's been an uptick in racist attacks against immigrants, against Latinos, against the, the gay community that we've been seeing for four years. 
So these next two weeks and, and, and the January 20th inauguration of, of Joe Biden could be very interesting. Danny, one of our guests earlier made a point that, yes, the U.S. establishment is very much uh, facing a certain crisis, but will ne nevertheless continue to be the U.S. establishment, and that going forward, even under Joe Biden, the real struggle in the United States on the domestic level will be on the streets. What do you think we can expect under Joe Biden? We are in the midst or we're still in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic, which of course has meant uh, restrictions across the world. But we have still seen mobilizations in the United States, the Black Lives Matter movement, and also these white supremacists. Do you think we could see further clashes, violence on the streets of the United States? Yeah, the ruling class is certainly very united behind Joe Biden. They're expecting Joe Biden to steady the ship of U.S. capitalism and U.S. imperialism. Uh, Donald Trump has always been uh, a loose cannon, very unpredictable, whether that's vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Pyongyang or vis-a-vis -vis Caracas, and, and certainly on the domestic front. Um, so I think the ruling class it hopes to sigh, uh, uh, hopes to breathe a collective sigh of relief in 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 two weeks when they're when they're done with Trump. It remains to be seen if they'll try to. Uh, use Trump as some type of um, fall guy and put him behind bars or go forward with uh, charges against Trump. But again, the problem is not just this uh, demagogue and, and figurehead. It's the base of white supremacy and fascism that he speaks to. Uh, but the ruling class is certainly uh, relieved. Even Fox News, uh, as of a, a week after the elections, uh, November 12th, turned against uh, Donald Trump. Uh, so Trump divided against Pence, divided against uh, much of the ruling Republican establishment, divided against Fox. What does Trump have left? And all he has left at this point really is that, that fascist base that I was referring to. Danny, we heard, um, we've heard a lot of reactions from global leaders across the world about what's been happening in Washington today and calls for respect for democracy, respect for institutions in the United States. There was also a statement released by the government of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. And in that statement, which condemns what was happening today in Washington, there was a point made that what's happening in the United States now is something that happens in many countries across the world supported by the United States by its aggressive foreign policy. Yeah, there we see the incredible hypocrisy of the United States. And if other countries were to act like the United States, right now we would have Cuban or Venezuelan or Angolan or, or North Korean troops in the streets of Washington, D.C., trying to bring order. Um, so the ruling class is certainly afraid of projecting um, this polarization, this divisiveness across the country, this is not good for the stability of, of the ruling uh, capitalist and imperialist interests. And it was interesting to see the Secretary of State, El Canciller uh, Jorge Ariasa, in his tweet to call for the, uh, the respect of, of law and order in the U.S., turning that U.S. imperialist rhetoric back on the imperialists. Of course, we understand, too, that when the U.S. talks about uh, its own democracy and law and order, that is the democracy uh, by and for the rich, by the super wealthy, by the billionaires who control the major summits of political, media, and economic power in this country. So for the vast majority of us, for the 99 percent, we don't see any democracy worth protecting, and we want to attack and, and organize and mobilize, not just against uh, Trump, but an entire system that created Trump and that has produced white supremacy for centuries. Danny Shaw, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for once again offering your insight into what's been happening in the United States and the repercussions for domestic policy in the United States as it prepares for the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. Danny, thank you. Thank you. And we continue.